seeing the machine for the first time was, um, I, I, I can't even explain it. It's like all these years that I dreamt and talked and um, I said that this is what we wanted to do and it was finally coming to fruition. And, um, you know, I had to get over the fear. I talked about that before in another video and um, I'm really lucky that I have the team here that can handle this next growth of head games and it was just it was just such a inspiring thing to see because i honestly uh, didn't know if i was ever going to see it in my career uh, having this machine here teamwork makes the dream work for sure so there was some confusion on the date of the machine landing and i was freaking out i hit up steve uh, I'm friends with Steve. I've been friends with him for a very long time. And Steve said he's going to make it happen. And the forklift that he brought, uh, he didn't bring the one that probably would have came with him uh, just trying to doing it the right way and the right date. And they brought a smaller one and he thought he would be okay. Well, it turned out that this thing's on a 53 foot long truck and the floor of it is not something that they could easily drag it with the skates so they put skates underneath the front or underneath the back and they put a jack in the front and this would have been fine if it was on like a regular 18 wheeler but since it was in this open truck it was hell it took three hours to just pull this thing off of the truck and uh they couldn't just easily uh just do it you know so then the skates kept falling off at one point, I got so nervous, I had to just walk away and I went into the office because I was so afraid of this thing falling off the back of the truck. But thankfully, Steve and them guys are so, they're just a well-oiled machine. They got it in here and I just, you know, I was afraid of something that I really didn't need to be afraid of and just trust these guys. I just wanted to say a special thank you to Steve Vignola and all of his crew for getting this thing in safely. And the guys from Centroid are here and they all kind of helped get this thing in. It was not easy, but 
thankfully we have professionals that got it done. So we got the machine in and I can't believe it. It's an incredible moment. We've been trying to do this for well over a decade. We moved into the shop 12 years ago actually to get to this moment and you know, it's finally here. And uh, so I just want to introduce you guys. This is George from Centroid. We got Matt. Matt's uh, going to be running the machine. And uh, we got Jeff here too from Centroid. So now they're going to go over some training. We're going to learn how to use the machine. One guy's going to set it up and we'll be more. So we sent Matt to get the training at Centroid, and when Matt was at Centroid, they did a 2JZ GTE digitizing. Uh, we picked the 2JZ because there is basically six ports that they have to digitize. Now, I mentioned earlier how it treats each valve as its own port. So there was a lot of clang, there was a lot of master cam, there was a lot of everything. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't easy for him to just go there and cut something. I wanted to make it as hard as possible because Matt's one of those people that the more he does it, he's gonna pick up on it, he's gonna have questions, and he's gonna be able to run through it a lot faster, giving uh, something that's a little bit more difficult. Not to mention the 2JZ is actually one of our number one CNC ports, so it was very important for us to do that one first. I have uh, some things going on with my father and I was not able to go with Matt to the training. So Centroid was nice enough to send two people in order to train myself and Matt at the same time. So we did another digitize while they were here. So we had some extra data. We did a 2JZ GE head uh, here, and then we switched back to the 2JZ GTE in order to cut it and try to use his files. So a lot of people think that when you get the head ported that, or they want to get CNC ported, that all you have to do is put it in the machine and it just ports it. When in reality, it's way, way different than that. So what you have to do is you have to hand port it or you can digitize something that has already been CNC ported and you digitize it. And what I mean by digitizing is, so what you see here is a probe and the probe is probing the whole port and you have to really, you have to, you have to split the port in half when you're doing a four valve head and there's a stylus in there with a little ball and it's going to touch all the way around the port and it's going to make a map of it and what it does see i can show you right here i can show you right here like here's the stylus that you've seen in the head and here's the little ball and this is all the spots it's hitting so it's going to hit every 40 thousands it's going to make a little like a bump in the port and what that's going to do is going to make a map of the port and then we bring it into Mastercam and we can then make a solid model and after we make the solid model then we can make a tool path so at least that's how it does it on the centroid and um, keep watching we'll show you the whole thing so what happens is the you're going to treat each with a multi-valve uh, you're going to treat each half of the port as a whole port and then you clay the other side you probe the one side and then you move the clay you probe the other side so it basically treats it as a whole separate port and then you're basically gonna put them together in mastercam to make the whole thing but it doesn't um it's not like a, a an easy one two three thing it it's really uh it takes a lot to a lot of information to go together to make a port and basically each side takes about 25 minutes to go through the whole port. So it's gonna go through one side, it'll go through the entire port to almost the short turn, and then it flips the head and it, it does the bowl side and as far as it can reach inside there. It's gonna cut it in the same fashion. 
So you basically you can program it how far down you want it to go and and uh, and how how far up you want to go. But it, it's not like a it just does it on its own. This is stuff that you actually have to input. So when we're ready to actually cut something off came the GE and we put the GT back, GTE head back on. That way we can see and do some test cuts. Now everything actually did not go as planned on that. And to be honest, by Thursday, all of our brains were mush. So we had four days. Uh, those guys were here 10 hours a day. We tried our hardest to get as much training in as possible. And although we should have something to cut by that day. We ran into a snag and none of us felt like fixing it in the moment. We feel like we can just take care of it ourselves. We have a ton of training. And uh, so now that's on to the next thing. I can't thank Jeff and George and John over at Centroid. All them guys were really, really good to us. Um, I said they, they sent two people just to help me out because of things going on with my father. And um, uh, they really honed in on us. They, they made sure that we were prepared when they left. And um, I just wanna say thank you to Centroid and all the help that they really put out for us. Next up, we are gonna show the trials and tribulations we actually went through on digitizing the GTE head, what went wrong, what went right, and um, we're gonna show it all. So be sure to stay tuned, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. If there's anything you wanna see, actually some of this is already taped, but if there's anything you wanna see, maybe I'll make it into a future video. That's it, toodles. Games!